Welcome to Times Online Interviews. I am Dorothy Tiriboni Chandrasekhar. Today we have Prajit Balasubramani, I'm General Partner Managing Director, BOV Capital, in conversation with the Times Online about the current landscape of startups and the challenges the companies face. Mr. Balasubramaniam, to start off with, what are your success stories? The management is about uh, 30 million dollars. Okay. We will be looking at furthering that to about $20 million by the end of now, hopefully by the end of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have invested in about 12 companies. Have you had any successful exits from companies? We had another exit in India for an AI company. Okay. Uh, and then this early this year, we had three exits lined up. What are the companies that you're planning to go public with? Uh, basically, uh, list a company, uh, we want to list zigzag the stock markets ah. and unfortunately yeah. crashed so we yeah. can do that. And we had uh, another company called Ro which we had an yeah. investor lined up, yeah. um, an overseas investor lined up yeah. for an exit but uh, because of the, due to the country risks and what happened in the February, March, April, yeah. uh, they pulled out. Um, in one sense it's also good that they pulled out because the, the company is going from pillar to post. Yeah. So it will probably double our valuation and hopefully next day we will get something out of it. Right. And then we uh, had another company called Agritmix, which is in the agritech uh, space. Okay. Uh, we invested in the company here. The company is now moved into Singapore. Uh, and we are looking at, we've actually uh, found a Hong Kong based investor for that company okay. at $3.5 million. And we are looking to expand the company to uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh. What are your biggest challenges in the current context? Look, today, unfortunately, Sri Lanka is a very small place. Uh, we do it in our own way. Mm -hmm. We can't compare ourselves yeah. to the region or India. Right? And knowing that, we know we can get probably uh, uh, exits to the extent of our capacity maybe up to about 100 million, 100 million dollars. Right? Uh, so far, our exits have been around 20 million dollars. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, and that can be scaled well if the conduciveness is there. Yeah. So example, if, 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 if after following COVID, mm -hmm. if we didn't have this issue today, I think the, the ecosystem would have developed much further. Yeah. And when I say conducive, one of the biggest obstacles is, as I said, we are, today we are starting to bring funds in. Yeah. So the next best option is for these companies to go, go out yeah. to a share shop and set up out there, yeah. where the local investors like us still sit here. And, and we are an institutional investor, we are not an individual investor, yeah. right? So we have an institutional investor, the, the DIF fund, the yeah. innovation fund, yeah. BOV Capital, all yeah. are institutional investors. Yeah. Right? So we uh, basically, when we uh, exit, mm -hmm. the funds come back here. Mm -hmm. We have done this with mm -hmm. Singha, we have done this with uh, the AI company in India, the funds yeah. come back here. Mm -hmm. right? um, so when you get a bigger valuation, when you go out, you grow faster and you get a bigger valuation, yeah. it's a better return for the country. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are in a situation where I think uh, some there's a different school of thought thinking that we are going to go and run away. Yeah. Yeah. If we want to run away, we can always do that. We don't need the help of the government to do that, right? So we are here sitting and doing officially things mm -hmm. to ensure we get the support from the government to uh, actually make it more conducive. Sri Lanka doesn't have adequate policies to facilitate startup. In the current context, what are you doing about it? So, some of the things from the Ceylon Chamber, I represent, I am the chairperson of the Council of the Startups. And through that, we have, uh, we look at uh, any policy related issues for the private sector. And we also try to help all these companies, SMEs and startups to grow. Yeah. The Chamber, you can actually leverage through the Chamber. The Chamber is very well connected globally and locally. Okay. And we try to leverage on the strengths of the Chamber and go forward. And a good example is again in Singapore, when we took them to Singapore, we actually, uh, that, that connect came through the chamber, through the Sri Lanka Singapore Business Council. The so today, NSINGA, NSINGA, yeah, yes. Right, even, even the exit of NSINGA came through the chamber connect. Mm -hmm. right? So we are trying to replicate that in different countries through yeah. the using the chamber's uh, strength. Okay. So how successful have you been so far in that respect? Um, we we just we've just initiated that one year ago, mm -hmm. right? So last early last year we started the council of startups, and um, we have been 
quite successful in terms of helping companies, even mm -hmm. as recently there was a company, one of the member companies wanted to go to Indonesia, the visa yeah. was rejected for yeah. the blockchain conference, yeah. and we, we gave them an endorsement uh, for the visa and they got the visa to go. Right? So, so like that we have, we have put another company um, in the food chain mm -hmm. business, uh, we have connected them in Malaysia and Singapore, mm -hmm. who are going in there. So we are actually helping companies connect them unofficially. Okay. Officially what we are trying to do is, uh, if you are a member of the Council of Startups, we are trying to create, uh, we are trying to tap an MOU with different country councils mm -hmm. so that they can leverage on that without having to pay additional fee. Because startups can't afford to pay this, right? So it's, it's, it's uh, the, the chamber that can actually help yeah. go to market. So those are two things that we look at yeah. from the chamber's perspective. So the policy side of things, we have looked at, now we've been talking to the ROC, we've been talking to the Central Bank. Mm -hmm. And there is a task force uh, that has been uh, created by the president, which mm -hmm. is happening right now, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, how quickly you can shut down a company, how quickly you can open a company, mm -hmm. and things like that. Like, you know, the share shops uh, looking at that part of it. So, so there are things happening, uh, and for years these all have been there, mm -hmm. but uh, successfully implement implement successful implementation has been always a Concern, right? So I'm hoping this time around things will get implemented mm -hmm. and then business can move on. What, what other challenges do you face? I mean, I know the economic challenge is really bad, but what other challenges? I mean, economic challenge is global. Yeah. We are going to go through recession yeah. globally, yeah. right? And uh, liquidity is going to be yeah. very difficult. But look, smart investors always look for time for this yeah. and go after good things. Right? Maybe valuation might be lower mm -hmm. for a lot of companies, but uh, eventually I think we can get things in Sri Lanka as well. Yeah. Because we've got solid tech talent. Right? I mean, it's like our CIM graduates, our cinnamon, our tea. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of things that we can do locally. Mm -hmm. And we proved it beyond doubt, uh, having such a small population, mm -hmm. we have, per capita wise, we've done quite well yeah. globally. Right? Unfortunately, Things haven't gone well from a political area. Mm -hmm. So I think that can be better. From from the tourism perspective, that can be better. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, we can, the low hanging fruit is the uh, tourism industry. Yeah. Now, we don't invest today in the uh, tourism industry from a tech perspective. Mm -hmm. It's because the industry is pretty dead. Yeah. Right? For the last three years, we've killed, they've killed many, many, many small, medium enterprises. Yeah. Right? And it's very difficult to start a company. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, but you can kill it overnight. That's the sad part. So, so when, when things like this happen, so, I, the, so to me, ideally, going in the next six months to a year or two years, we should have that spoon sale where we have the low hanging fruit and the tourism coming in. We should bring the dollars. Months. Yeah. I'm saying going forward from now on, mm -hmm. at least for the next six months to a year or two years, yeah. we should at least have a bit of smooth sale so that uh, growth is there, mm -hmm. uh, foreign direct investments are happening. Uh, that's important. What are the challenges you face in securing funding lines for startups? Uh, as you know, startups also need a lot of cash funding yeah. to come in. Yeah. So that's not coming in. Yeah. And that's been an obstacle for us. So it's, it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation because yeah. uh, locally, locally homegrown companies, and I'm talking about startups mm -hmm. specifically, who are innovative and who is the new engine for the new economy, yeah. right? And uh, if we look at regionally, also these are the companies that have, uh, you know, created a bit of innovation and entrepreneurship and yeah. scaled the new economy forward. Yeah. And for us, we've been doing this uh, for the last uh, 12 years. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, as I said, you know, our best exits have been around that range. Yeah. Uh, but I think we could do much more than this if the if the if there was a conducive uh, environment for us to go forward. In Takas.lk and the ownership changed some time ago. How has the performance been? Put in touch with the current performance, but uh, I'm told by the previous founder Lahiru that uh, yeah. things have gone well, things have gone quite well, and they've expanded. And we also see companies like that, you know, your, when your resources thin out, you need to make sure you have a, a better person to take care of it and move forward with the big, bigger resources. And that's what happened with Takas, right? So they were able to 
use their resources and take it forward in a different way. The online shopping market is tough and some companies have exited that space. In that context, what is your take on it? Not really, I wouldn't say saturating because mm -hmm. if you take the retail industry, it's quite huge. Yeah. Right? Compared to the online, yeah. you compared to the online, yeah. two, three, four, four, five percent, whatever. Yeah. Right? Um, one of the reasons that hasn't taken off is maybe the connectivity mm -hmm. from an internet perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know we boast a lot of, uh, from a digital perspective, we boast a lot. But I still think we lack a lot also in terms of the rural areas yeah. having access to, you know, the, the, the 5G network and things like that. So, yeah. and we saw that during COVID time, right, where, where people were climbing uh, uh, tank tops to get a signal, right? So uh, when that happens for the education, <laughs> yeah. where they going to shop online, right? Yeah. So I mean, so it has to be the entire country has to be conducive in that sense. And I can understand from a telco's perspective because I work very closely with the telco, mm -hmm. who's part of the fund. Mm -hmm. And for them also, it's ROI. Yeah. So when you when you go and put a tower there, they need to get an ROI on the tower. Right? So so and it's a, it's a it's a, it's a catch twenty two situation, and that's where the government come, has come. Right? And, and some of the taxes we are paying, mm -hmm. and today people are crying about paying uh, extra taxes, yeah. right? But I, I don't see a problem with paying tax, right? I mean, it's good as long as it's channeled in the right way and we get return on the investment. And that too is an investment, right? Because that's the only way the government also can collect its revenue, right? So, you know, and, and we are in a situation which is very, I mean, I'm also going to get hit, right? I mean, actually, over the last few years, one of the biggest hurdles we have had is double taxation for us. Right? Because, because from our perspective, we have double, triple taxation because our structures, a fund structure doesn't exist in Sri Lanka. That's one of our biggest hurdles, which I've taken up over and over again. Yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. So no venture capital will come here until that kind of structure happens. What is the current appetite for startups now? Why would somebody come and risk all their capital, especially in this asset class, which is anyway of high risk, yeah. and then lose? Uh, their taxes twice over yeah. and invest in the country. Right? So, I mean, mm -hmm. so we are really not asking the government to put money in, mm -hmm. but make the structures right so that it makes it easier for people to come in, invest, and take out money. Right? Mm -hmm. And I know there will be a hundred reasons why they shouldn't, why one shouldn't be doing it, mm -hmm. but they will be the wrong reasons. You know, just because a thief comes and steals doesn't mean everyone is a thief, right? Thief. So, Who are you speaking to with regard to this, the fund structure? I have been speaking about this from 2015 mm -hmm. when I was in the Mozit's uh, Entrepreneurship and Steering Committee. Okay. Yeah, we did a paper with the World Bank mm -hmm. that was during the same regime. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the paper was filed away when elections were lost. And then I spoke to the next regime about the same thing because for me, it didn't matter who came into power as long as the country moves forward. Right? And, uh, and we spoke to various people, mm. uh, including Nival Cabral, Mr. Nama, we spoke mm. to various people. And, and I, I, at that, I, with the, with the, the last two years when we started the uh, President Chamber, mm -hmm. I officially represented the Chamber and spoke about these things mm. with the, uh, the yeah. previous regime. Yeah. And now we are taking it up again with the current regime, right? So with the Central Bank and we have you know, gone to ROC. But I'm hoping things will move forward. And I'm being optimistic. If I'm not, I would have left the country as well. <laughs> the brain drain is a big problem in the country. And we know that tech companies need a lot of talent. In this context, how are you managing this challenge? Companies are not making the same revenues. And then over and above that, taxes are being paid. And then uh, the employees also have to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So people who can afford to go out are going out. Yeah. People who can't remain back here. Yeah without a choice, um, and they'll have to survive, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yes. But if, if, when you look at brain drain and when all the best brains are going, I think drones are going. I mean, that's been happening since the last 30 years, right? We've been talking about this brain now drain. It's accelerating. So if we even take in 1983, when the rats broke out, it happened. The majority of them went because of economic, uh, yeah. you know, instability or independence, yes, right? Yes. Economic independence wasn't there. Right? Yeah. And most of them have gone out there and done pretty well. The question is, when are we going to attract people to come back in? Now, I came back in. I was away for 20 years. Right? I came back in 2002, hoping, hoping uh, things would be nice and, nice and sunny and bright. Right? But having said that, I mean, um, 
mean, we are still here. In two, uh, so 2002 to now, we built a few things, uh, built the angel network in Sri Lanka. So we actually developed the ecosystem. My partner moved to India, I moved here. Both of us were away, both Sri Lankans. Mm. We had a passion to do this, and that's how we came back and started, uh, um, started the ecosystem. The startup ecosystem is facing a lot of challenges in terms of funding, brain drain, projects being closed, projects at a standstill, etc. However, most of you are still holding up. What do you attribute this to? Is it your resilience or is it the country's resilience? <laughs> I suppose resilience, but uh, uh, well, we've, we've been rock bottom for a while. Right? So, I mean, Whenever we think no, we can't go any further, we go we try and dig another hole. Yeah, go there, right? So, yeah. but I, I don't think right now. I don't think there's any more to go. Yeah. We can't afford to go, right? So we need to come back with the uh, amount of it. I mean, okay. So we've done the, we've got the revenue part of it happening through the taxation yeah. system. Yeah. But then we don't want to put the revenue into a sinking pit either. So it has to be restructured. That's a must. Because if that doesn't happen. I wouldn't want my good money going into a city, right? And I don't think anybody would, right? So, I mean, so I'm happy to pay as long as we see that it's going down the right path and making sure the country moves on. That's what uh, it is. And we have been paying for it. Even though it's still going into a single pit, we have been paying. And so, uh, hope, in the hope that things will get restructured and move forward. Right? Thank you so much. Thank Welcome. you very much.